Let's consider a vector a and an orthogonal system of axes. That means that the axes are mutually perpendicular. For convenience, the origin of the system coincides with the tail of the vector. Let's find the projections of vector a on each of the two axes. We can achieve this by drawing through the tip of a two lines that are parallel to each of the two axes. The two vectors ax and ay shown on the screen are called the components of vector a along ox and oy. The process of finding out the components of a vector is called resolving a vector into its components. It is obvious that the vector sum of ax and ay is a. Therefore, the components of any vector can be used in place of the vector itself in any calculations. Sometimes it is more convenient to use the components of a vector rather than the vector itself. It is possible to define vector components that are not mutually perpendicular, but in general they are not as useful as the ones described a moment ago. If the angle between the vector and one of the axes is given, it is fairly straightforward to find out the magnitudes of the two components as a function of the magnitude of A and the angle alpha. AX is A times cosine alpha and AY is A times sine alpha. Another useful relationship is given by Pythagoras theorem A squared equals AX squared plus AY squared. Now it's time for a simple work example. The goal of this exercise is to find out the size and the direction of the vector sum of the three vectors shown below. The magnitudes of the vectors are a equals 4, b equals 2.5 and c equals 3. In addition, the angles that vectors b and c make with ox axis are given, 45 degrees and 60 degrees respectively. The idea is to resolve each vector into its components and find, in a first step, the components of the resultant vector and then, in a second step, the resultant vector itself. We start by projecting each vector on the two axes. In the case of first vector A, its direction coincides with OX axis. Therefore, the component AX is equal to A and the component AY is 0 bx is 1.8 and by is 1.8 as well. Similarly, we can find cx 1.5 and cy 2.6. Now that we've calculated the components of all three vectors, we can remove the original vectors from our diagram. As you can see, all component vectors are either along ox or oy. The next step is to find out the resultant of all the components along OX, we'll call it RX, and then the resultant of all the components along OY, this will be called RY. In both cases, we are dealing with one-dimensional vector addition. We can now proceed and calculate RX. Of course, we have to take into account the directions of the vectors we are adding. RX is 4.3. Similarly, Ry is minus 0 0.8. Now we can draw the two vectors Rx and Ry. The minus sign for Ry indicates that its direction is opposite to what is considered to be the positive direction for the vertical axis Oy. The two vectors Rx and Ry are nothing else than the components of the vector sum of AB and C. We'll call this resultant vector R. We can easily find the magnitude and the direction of R. To work out the magnitude, we could use Pythagoras' theorem. The size of R is 4.4. To work out the direction of R, we can calculate, for example, the tangent of angle alpha, and this will give us the value of angle alpha. In this case, 11 degrees. All our results were calculated to two significant digits since the data used was given with two significant figures. The final answer to the original question is the resultant vector has a magnitude of 4.4 the unit is not relevant here and as shown on the screen 
its direction is along a line that makes an angle of 11 degrees with a horizontal axis. Let's summarize the topics we've covered today. A vector quantity is indicated by an arrow above the symbol of the quantity. Displacement is another typical example of a vector quantity. We've covered a couple of methods used to add vectors and subtract vectors. We found out that vectors can be multiplied. We took a closer look to the multiplication of a vector by a scalar. We define the components of a vector and we identify a method of calculating the components. We went through a worked example in which we use the components to add three vectors. MIT OpenCourseWare is a free publication of course materials used at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The physics section contains a number of video lectures with Professor Walter Lewin. Although parts of some of the lectures could be quite challenging even for the most able IB students, the practical demonstrations and the entertaining teaching style of Professor Lewin would probably allow you to achieve a better conceptual understanding of physics. The lectures are available at OCW website. Some of the lectures can be accessed through iTunes Music Store. We've reached the end of this second episode of IB Physics Help Video Podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write me at ibphysicshelp at gmail.com. Thank you and see you next time.